you know, you said you're humble, so I will give you your flowers because at that time, like, it seemed like everyone, like, kind of caught that confidence you had, that swag you had, your mm-hmm. flow, and it seemed like people from the jump knew, like, oh, this this guy, this kid at the time is a star. So, like, mm-hmm. I wanted to know, like, at that age, like, where did that bravado came from at such a Harlem. young age? Yeah. That bravado came from Harlem. All that came from Harlem. That's that's what you got being in Harlem. Harlem was an exciting place. It was always about we we I right, so I kind of told you about the history of Harlem, right? Mm-hmm. That being said, we felt like New York was the the best place, right? And we were the best borough in New York. This is how we felt at the time, right? Mm-hmm. So with New York being, we felt like the best city at the time. Harlem being the best borough in the city, us be so we not only are we from the best city, we're from the best borough in that city. Who do we even compete with? The rest of the niggas in our borough. Nobody can fuck with us. So we that's why when you see paid in full, like you see all like the dame pull up and be like, Oh, I got my Thursday car, this is my Wednesday car, that's this is my Friday bitch. That's how we act, cause it's like <laughs> Yeah. All day we just stunting on yeah. each other. Like we we built our our wow. whole aura off of like, how much money you got in the car, nigga? You got four hundred thousand. I got five hundred thousand. Like it's all. It was always and you my man. I'm not stunting yeah. on you really. Like it's, it's not it was, a competitive. Thing. It was a, it was competitive, but in like okay. a laughter. You know what I'm saying? Like I want you to win. You yeah, were, yeah, kinda, win, yeah. But yeah, nigga. I'm stunting on you type of way, and yeah. that's always our Harlem bend. So. With that being said, you gain the, that true nature of always competing in that, oh, oh, I might go see him with this new fly shit on. Oh, I'm going to make sure I'm fly to him next time I see him. Oh, I'm going to make sure I got the newest car next time I see him. And that just gives you that, oh, we always, we always chasing the next fly, the next, it's like a high. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, And then speaking of fly shit, man, like, from I I understand the background behind it, but you know when you were wearing the bandana mm-hmm. on top of your head as a crown, mm-hmm. like obviously I understand the gang affiliation behind it, but uh, you made it fashionable for people who weren't a part of, a part of gang. Were you aware of what you were doing at the time? I mean, like I said once again, just being from Harlem, I think we were just aware that we were fly. Mm-hmm. Just we were aware that we were fly, motherfuckers. We were aware of that. The influence that everybody we had, we weren't aware of that. Nah, because mm. if we were aware of that, we would have capitalized off of it more. And we would have took care of a lot more business. And we would have approached a lot of business differently back then. What inspired you to want to do that in the, in the first place? Nah, and just being different. Just wow. always, like I said, all right, once again, being from Harlem, you always want to have the next. So you always want to do something that he's not doing. So why right, he doing that, I want to... I want to do bandanas. Niggas mm. wearing they bandanas like this. I'm going to fold mines and wear my shit like this. So it just looks, it's always just trying to be the next. So it's like, that's why it's like we always could set trends. Because once, if you look, it's a lot of, see, now niggas caught on. So it's like, I don't even really do it. I'm on my own shit. I got the flyest shit, ICFMF clothes. So I don't really, you know what I mean? But it's like, niggas know. But back in the day, it's like, we started the whole, like, hold on. You got to look. Most people follow, right? So whatever's hot, that's what everybody's doing. It's Dior. Everybody's Everybody, wearing Dior. Yeah. So I'm already on to that. I'm moving on to get the next thing already. Mm. I'm looking for the next thing while everybody's wearing Dior. That's one thing I got to give guess me. what? I, and I know I'm fly enough to niggas going to say, what's that Joel's is wearing? Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm already on to that. That's why with Michael Murray, I knew niggas was jacking ball mains. As soon as I'm like, nah, I'm not. I'm, I don't want to do ball mains. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Drake had the line about that. not wearing Michael Murray's. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. Everybody yeah. to each his own. Hey, niggas can say what they want. I fuck with Michael Murray. I still got, you know, I fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? I, don't, I wear more of my shit now. I don't mm-hmm. as much. But again, bring it, introducing the jeans and all that, I was solely responsible for that in a lot of ways in the hip hop industry for sure, hands down. Now, back to the bandana, I, I wonder, did you receive any flack or tension from what? people out in the West Coast when you were out there just wearing a bandana around your head? Um, 
I wouldn't say we received flack for the actual bandana, but then mm-hmm. again, yeah, because, you know, gang culture was big and mm-hmm. L.A. was big and you had to watch how you moved in L.A. always, especially back then when it came to wearing flags and red and blue flags, mm-hmm. and particularly. You understand what I'm saying? It was It was definitely a big thing. So, you know, just had to... I've always been a, a, a firm believer of, you know, trying to trying to um, move the right way. Uh-huh. So you could really do out here is try to try to move move the right way. You know what I'm saying? And and you can't assure something, but you can try to not be around certain things to not put yourself in that situation. Uh-huh. And I feel like it's artists. A lot of artists, you know, they put themselves in situations. I mean, I've grown. I've I've been blessed enough to. Be, be able to still be here and knowing the, the type of situations I've been able to escape and, and you know what I'm saying, now knowing, you know, I got family. I ain't trying to put myself in those type of situations no more. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and that also makes me wonder if around that I time. I survived, though. That's why I say with the young niggas sometimes, yeah. I'd be like, man, all I could do is pray for them. And you know what I mean? Mm. I, su- I survived my 20s. My early, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. just could pray that they they do the same. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And I, I got love for all of them. That's why I always say chase the dream, man. Chase the dream. Because other than that, you know, you ain't get caught up. A whole and, bunch of other shit. Yeah, you, and that leads me to my next point. I wanted to, I wanted to know, like, was there... Was the checking in culture relevant at that time? Like, did y'all ever have to do that going over in the West Coast? And yeah, I mean, I, I, I checked in respectfully. Okay. I, I still check in respectfully. I feel like respectful check ins are, are, are cool because mm-hmm. uh, I don't have to check in. Let's be clear. Okay. I don't check in because I have to because I'll go anywhere I choose and please and don't call a motherfucking person. And if something happens because of that, then that's what was meant to happen. That's how I live. But I check in respectfully because, you know, when you go to people's town and they have, you know what I'm saying, certain auras and they have certain, is I feel like you should. Mm-hmm. Especially people that you fuck with. You know what I mean, if I go to a town and somebody I fuck with, because it's niggas that come to the town and I, I always put it to certain niggas. I'm a type of nigga that I, I, I'm a real nigga, so... Anybody's ran across me, artist wise, no jewels. I roll out the carpet. If a nigga come to town and it's like, I show a nigga love. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I mean, I make sure he gonna get whatever he need. However, if I gotta send my peoples their way, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? However, whatever. So, you know. You don't still wear, you don't do that now, right? What? Like the checking in, are you still? A it's part not of that? about checking in for me. That like it's bigger than that. Now I'm grown, like I'm yeah. super old. So it's like it's, it was, and it was never. It was like like I said, more like more respect. respectful. Just mm. like niggas checking with me, so I'm checking in. You know what I mean, it's not. Even, I wouldn't even call it checking in. Uh, just saying, calling my friends when I get to town. Mm-hmm. But niggas labeled it checking in. So you know what I mean, cool. If that's y'all want to put tags on everything and then make it seem fucked up because that's y'all mentality I don't got time to think like that I do mm-hmm. what I want when I want to do it mm-hmm. and I move how I want did that did these games niggas is playing making up this whole illusional life you know what I'm saying um, and, and tell me if I'm wrong because obviously you have the experience and the knowledge but to me it felt like the east coast was more responsible for like the explicit gang lyrics in the in the music around that time like and i feel like a lot of people want to credit you know the west coast because they said you know ice t had that six in the morning record was kind of like the first record that kind of like um i guess was recognized as the first gang record Mm -hmm. uh uh but i feel like the story in that was of somebody from new york so like who? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I honestly, that's that goes back way before a little bit before my time. The whole gang culture. I'm not claiming to be. I don't think the East Coast started. I wouldn't say the East Coast are responsible for starting gangs. Mm. It was a culture that we adapted. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? It was a culture that was brought to us. You know what I'm saying it was definitely more trendy and more done on the West Coast, but things spread. And that's how the world is. You understand what I'm saying? The same way rap spread. Hip hop started in New York. So we can't be mad at nobody. We just like us saying we're mad at them for rapping. Mm-hmm. 
They're mad at us for gangbanging. Think people gonna pick up stuff. People travel. People migrate. The fuck? People live here for 10 years, go all the way over there, ain't for 10 years. But guess what they do? They take what's with them, with them. Mm. So if the gang is with them, they take that shit with them. Niggas in jail getting shipped. They don't, when you go to jail, you don't have your number. They ship you wherever the fuck they want to ship you. So if I'm repping blood and I'm a real nigga and they and I'm from East Coast and they send me West Coast, guess what? And they send me the West Coast and I'm from East Coast, guess what I'm repping when I get to the West Coast? Same fucking thing I was repping on the East Coast. Y'all niggas get with it, nigga. So that's how shit happens. Mm-hmm. That's how life works. I'm saying shit spreads. So at the time, yeah, you had your, I think it was more or less like, Everybody just wants their credit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And they get it. You know, That's West good. Coast, you know what I mean? But the West Coast is not even responsible. Chicago is responsible for gang culture. How so? Ch- Chicago had the first gangs, to my knowledge, before, like, I'm talking about, like, Black Panthers and shit like that. These other gangs before Bloods and Crips. Bloods mm. and Crips may have started, to my knowledge, like, more on West Coast. Those actual, but gang culture started in Chicago. Mm. To my knowledge, mm-hmm. a lot of this shit happened before me. So once again, I'm just this is my opinion. This opinion, is shit that yeah. I, not even my opinion. Shit that I just think. You know what I mean, people could do more of a history and maybe tell me. But you know what I mean, so it, it, it's all just adapted culture. I'm saying just like music, music, yeah. And, and speaking of speaking of music, I feel like um, you know y'all were more Look at drill. Drill is yeah. doing the same thing right mm-hmm. now. It's adapted culture. Where did drill start from? Chicago. Yeah. Same play I just told you the gang started from. They did the same thing with the drill. And look, everybody's taking it. I'm saying. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.